So animals in this phylum are, are pretty interesting in the fact that they're um, among the most primitive, true multicellular organisms. So in some of your labs, you may have looked at single-celled animals, things like amoeba or paramecium. These ones um, are multicellular, and they're the first to display what's called tissue-level organization. So they have tissues, in other words, similar cells that are grouped or aggregated into specific patterns or layers, but at this point, they they still don't have true um, organs. Now, cnidarians have two distinct body forms. I'll be showing you actually a couple of different kinds. They have what's called a polyp form, which is usually sessile, or it means meaning that it doesn't swim around or move around, or they have what's called a medusa form, which is a free swimming animal. And in this case, the jellyfish, in this stage of its development, um, is displaying the medusa form. Now, some cnidarians display both types of forms during their life cycles, while others display um, only one. We're looking at a jellyfish. This is a species that's called the moon jelly. Uh, the species name is Aurelia aurita. So the moon jelly is a really good example of what's called a true jellyfish, or animals in the class Cyphozoa. They're kind of neat animals. Um, the, the name is appropriate. They are, they're soft and squishy like jelly. They feel very jelly-like. And they're made up of anywhere from 94 to 99% water. And like other cnidarians, like all cnidarians, they display what's called radial symmetry. So to understand radial symmetry, we can think about a wheel. So if you think of a bicycle, a bicycle wheel, for example, you've got the, the round part on the outside, and then the wheel is divided by a series of spokes, okay? And in this case, the uh, true jellyfish display what's called tetrameris radial symmetry. Tetra means four, so it's basically a radial symmetry made up of multiples of four. And we can see that right away in a couple of the structures, these sort of whitish horseshoe shapes uh, bits down on the bottom and also these these longer pieces right here we can see there's four of those so everything on this animal is made up in multiples of four now all cyphozoans all true jellyfish have both of the two um, uh, body shapes that I mentioned earlier, so the polyp and the medusa form. In this case here, we're looking at a, a mature or adult animal, so it only ha this this is the medusa form, what we would think of as sort of a typical jellyfish. So we're mostly going to just focus on the external anatomy of this animal. This is um, the the underside of the animal here, and the main part of the body is this. Well, it looks round and flat here, but in life, it would actually be uh, curved like this, sort of parasol shaped, okay? And that part is called the bell, okay? So most of this flat surface here is called the bell. And a hydrostatic skeleton, so a water-based skeleton, is basically what allows it to maintain its shape. So obviously it doesn't have bones, there's no hard shell like on an insect, so it's just a, a water skeleton that keeps its shape. So the outer rim of this animal, all on the outside where it's a little bit whiter, that's called the margin, okay? And the margin is divided into a number of sections, and we can sort of see those. We can see there's a point here and it sort of dips in and dips in and then in and then in and then in and we can go all the way around the margin like that to see these different sections. And if we counted them, we would actually find that again, they're, they're there in multiples of four. So again, the tetrameris radial symmetry. At each junction, so at each point between sections, we find a, a structure that's called a ropalium. So a ropalium consists of a few bits. You find a statocyst, which is used for balance. In other words, it helps the animal sort of orient itself in the water. And you also find something called an ocellus, which is used to perceive light. So it's sort of like a really primitive eye. So the other thing that we find along the margin are tentacles. And if you look really closely, you'll see these really thin, filamentous, fluffy little things all along the margin. Those are, in fact, the tentacles. And they shouldn't be confused with these larger things. Most people see these long things and assume that these are the tentacles, but those are, in fact, what's called the oral arms or the arms. So the way these guys eat is the tentacles, these little filamenty things, are used to filter tiny, tiny prey, and then the oral arms, which are actually sort of trough-shaped, they 
they if you, you can sort of open them right here so these trough shaped oral arms collect or scoop this tiny filtered prey from along the margin and it directs it in to the mouth which is sort of right in the middle there there's a hole there that goes to the mouth the mouth um, opens up to a short little gullet which leads to the stomach. From the stomach we have four gastric pouches which is basically where a lot of the digestion takes place. And the, the gastric pouches themselves are hard to see. Most things are hard to see in this animal because it's clear. But we know where the gastric pouches are located because they contain something else. These horseshoe shaped pale uh, white structures here are the gonads, the reproductive structures, and those are located within the gastric pouches. So near those pouches we find what's called gastric filaments, and we can't see those, but what's important to know is that the filaments are lined with special stinging structures called nidocytes, and the nidocytes are unique to the cnidarians, it's where they get the name from, and those are used to sting and so subdue anything that this jellyfish or any other cnidarian would want to eat. So it subdues the prey so that they can easily bring it to its mouth and, and then eat it. So now we're looking at an animal called a sea anemone. Anemones are in the class Anthozoa and these are marine animals so they live in salt water and you'll mostly find them in intertidal zones. Um, you'll find them pretty deep too. They'll go up to 75 meters deep in the water. So now unlike the moon jelly that we just observed, these guys only live in a polyp form so you'll never find them in a medusa shape. They only live in this sessile, so non-swimming polyp form. So that's something that is um, a little bit different. So the body of the sea anemone is divided into three main regions. First we have the oral disc, which is this upper surface right here that contains the tentacles and the mouth. Next we have the column, which is the cylindrical shaped main body region in the middle right here that houses all of the the guts so to speak and then lastly we have the basal disc which is the underside the base of it and that's what it uses to attach itself to a substrate so um, it actually secretes sort of a sticky mucus it's like a sticky glandular secretion and that's what it uses to glue itself and also it, it, it they can glide very very slightly on whatever surface they happen to be on now if you've ever seen a sea anemone in life, you know that they don't usually look quite this squished. Uh, the column here, inside, and we'll see them in a moment, there's, there's a whole bunch of really strong muscles in there. And in death, those muscles have all been contracted. So the animal is basically completely compressed. In life, it would be much more st stretched out and nicer looking. So the tentacles, coming back to the, the oral disc here, the tentacles are all of these fluffy look th looking things up at the top here. And each of these tentacles is armed with those specialized structures that I mentioned on the jellyfish, the nidocytes. So those sting the prey or subdue the prey and then food is drawn over these tentacles into the mouth which is this um, obvious opening up here at the top of the oral disc. So this is uh, an anemone that's basically been cut in half so we can see what's going on on the inside. So just to orient you, so here's the mouth, the mouth up here, okay. So the mouth opens into the pharynx, which is this sort of muscular structure right up here. And then the pharynx opens to the gastrovascular cavity, which is this little cavity at the, at the bottom. So that's where the digestion takes place. And then waste would come back out through the mouth right through there. Another thing that we can see are the gonads, so some of the reproductive structures. And if we look, here's a good example right here. So you can see uh, what looks like, a, it looks like a little stack of coins. If you imagine tiny little little coins, all stacked one on top of another in a pile, so like pennies in a pile, those are the gonads right there. So those are, those are the, um, the things that produce the sperm or the eggs. Now, so the sex cells are released from those and they, they go right out through the mouth too because that's, that's basically the only hole this animal has. So fertilization happens externally, it happens actually in the water. And then the fertilized egg eggs hatch um, into little tiny larvae that float down to the substrate and um, they turn into individual polyps.